Good evening, I'm Hannah McKenzie. Dozens gathered at Beulah Park today in memory of 50 year old Govard Hancotha, better known by his customers as Ready. Take a look at this. So this is a dock that the that belongs to the restaurant and clearly there is a boat that has been pushed up against the dock and it's been there for quite some time because as you can see there's some severe damage to both the dock and the boat. Most of the trailers have damage. Some of them just the siding completely ripped off and if we swing around over here others are just eerily a shell of what they once were. This is ground zero for Hurricane Michael three months after the storm tore through the area. Looking around, not much has changed. I was out and about for a little while today, Alan, and it was gorgeous, but not warm enough to get in the water like we saw just a short while ago. Those people must be from up north. <laughs> I probably the lab report from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement is in and it shows Hunter Black was not under the influence of alcohol, but his blood did test positive for narcotics. Pensacola police say he would hide behind trees and wait for female joggers and walkers to pass by before popping out and confronting them. A Crestview teen is now facing felony charges after authorities say he brought a gun and ammunition to school yesterday. Okaloosa County deputies say they found a handgun and half a dozen rounds of ammunition on 15 year old Jabari Imani. I've got Choctahatchee Bay on one side, the Gulf of Mexico on the other. That surf is fierce out there. That driver lost control of the car first, smashing into this fire hydrant, then taking out the telephone pole and finally hitting several cars parked outside the business. Something yeah. is amiss over at Five Flags Speedway. They need what? to start checking IDs because I don't believe all those drivers he are may old not be. enough. He's have barely able license. to drive on the road, but he can, he's been driving on the track for a while. A man accused of abducting and sexually assaulting a woman in Escambia County makes his first appearance in court today. Joshua Edwards is facing six charges, including carjacking, kidnapping, and sexual assault. We actually saw three guys inside just stuffing stuff into a backpack, and it's really not all that surprising because there's no running water here. There's also no electricity. Folks are getting desperate, and they are turning to looting. All over the Panama City area, we've seen signs kind of spray painted with the words, you loot, we shoot. A Myrtle Grove couple escaping serious injury after a car plows through their living room. It happened around 8 last night at the Fairfield apartment complex on Fairfield Drive. The couple telling our cameras the driver told them that her shoe got caught under the gas pedal, causing her to accelerate. This giant piece of machinery behind me, if you guys can't see that. Sorry, we're trying to hold on. Woo! Oh, it's getting gusty. So that machinery is from the University of Florida, and they have a crew out here that's kind of measuring wind speed as Gordon approaches, and I'm told he is approaching where we are right now. We have some answers for you tonight after several Decapitated chickens were found at the Jesse Rogers Memorial Cemetery this week. Anna McKenzie joins us now and she says this is not the first time. That is exactly right. The chickens were found at the base of a tree near the back of the cemetery, along with several pennies, leaving many wondering if this is a religious ritual. Seven decapitated chickens were found at the Jesse Rogers Memorial Cemetery on Tuesday. Today, just feathers left behind. We followed a trail leading straight to a carcass. Pennies were also found scattered around the birds. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then one in the bushes, twelve. Copper signifies love and compassion, a sacrifice for La Virgen de Cobre, says Jose Ortiz, who practices Santeria. The chickens, he says, symbolize ridding the body of disease, a curse, or preparing for a legal battle. The number of birds also has a meaning. She's basically calling the seven actual uh, deities or gods, you know, down to help that family who has a generational curse. We caught up with Ortiz at Stone Soup, an intuitive spiritual center. He tells us the focus of Santeria is cleansing the soul of negative energy. The religion is so complex and it's very deeply enriched with so many different other religions, voodoo, voodoo, you know, the list goes on. On the same day last year, the Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office says five decapitated chickens were found at the cemetery. A neighbor who didn't want to speak on camera says there's a history of animal sacrifices here. Several years back, decapitated goats were found. If they sacrificed the goat is to get the attention of the word on, you know, and to offer him an offering to protect the family and fight for that family. Ortiz says a goat can also represent the deity Oya, ruler of justice and the cemetery. Although he practices the light side of Santeria, there's a dark side too, and he doesn't take any chances. You were the one that was there? 
I went today. Okay. Um, after this meeting, I'd like to go ahead and do a cleansing on you because you were there and you were inside that immediate energy and whatever was attached to that work can be attached to you. Making sure nothing stuck, I was cleansed with sage. You get some sage and you smudge yourself and you'll notice the difference. Along with my photographer, Max, and everyone around us. Just to be on the safe side. I want to make sure that nothing is attached to you. The Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office is aware of the animal sacrifices, but tells us there is no open investigation. They are, however, stepping up patrols in the area. Live in the studio, Hannah McKenzie. November is National Adoption Month. More than 800 children are now waiting to be adopted right here in Florida. Today, that waiting list, well, it got a little bit shorter as six Escambia County families became legal. Anna McKenzie was there and met one thankful teen who was running out of time. Just two months away from aging out of the foster system, Kentrell Baptiste decided to make it official. Even though I consider myself a very independent person, it's always good to feel that you have some support there, you know, and someone who you can rely on. For Baptiste, who's been in and out of foster care since he was six months old, that person is Kathleen Menda. I'd take them all if I could, I guess. <laughs> Menda has fostered 15 children. Her newest is just two months old. She has one biological son and another who's adopted. But on this National Adoption Day, it's all about Baptiste. He's been family since day one. We're just making it official. Yep. So are you going to change your last name? Um, I wanted to change my name to a specific name, but she wouldn't let me, so I'm just going to keep it to this, <laughs> to Baptiste. You don't want to know. <laughs> what was the name? I want to know. Minaj. He's a Nicki Minaj fan. He's yeah. going to change his life to Minaj, and I said no. <laughs> so, there you go. Names aside, Baptiste just minutes away from legally becoming part of the Menda family. Until... <laughs> Not one, but two fire alarms go off. A mandatory building evacuation prompting an hour-long photo op in the parking lot as fire crews check the place out. And all clear, and it was back inside to take care of business. Do you know why you're here today? For adoption. And what do you want to happen today? Uh, for it to be finalized. Okay. Is there anything that you want to tell the judge today? Um... Today was a memorable day. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that. I'm signing it electronically right now, and it's filing with the clerk. So uh, it's final at this time, so congratulations. No pen and paper, no gavel, just a moment. 17 and a half years and two fire alarms in the making. Hannah McKenzie, Channel 3 News.